And our thanks this morning to former Chicago Alderwoman Helen Schiller. She is sharing her experience as a city council member and community leader through a new book right here. It is out today. There you see it. Daring to struggle, daring to win five decades in resistance of resistance in Chicago's uptown community. Schiller's 24 years as a Chicago City Council member representing the uptown neighborhood's 46 ward and ongoing challenges within the neighborhood. We appreciate you joining us this morning Thank and you. we want to talk a little bit about your book. Uh, Helen, as noted in the subtitle, the book takes readers through five decades of struggles in Chicago's uptown neighborhood, well-known neighborhood. Talk about those struggles and the issues that you really wanted to lay out. Well, consistently, really, the issues had to do with housing, education, uh, health care, and police misconduct, as I realized as I actually got to the end of the book. I started with a series of stories and um, in the 70s, and having to also constantly set context. In the 70s, the uptown would be, for people who've just moved there or even to the city, would be unrecognizable. So I really had to tell the story um, of the people who lived there and why so many people felt so strongly, especially about dis uh, development without displacement, which when I was elected was really one of my, pr other than becoming Harold Washington's 26th vote and giving him a majority in the city mm -hmm. council, which is why I ran, uh, the, the uh, development without displacement and showing that it could be done was one of my highest priorities. And that vote on city council was, of course, tectonic. What inspired you, now more than a decade removed to city council, what inspired you to, to finally put pen to paper, if you will, and write the book? Honestly, it was the polarization of national politics that for me was foreshadowed initially in Chicago when Harold Washington was elected and then over and over again during my own experiences in the city council. And um, I really was so frustrated by uh, what was happening. I have been very frustrated by what's happening nationally and felt that my experiences provided embedded within them were many lessons that ought to be helpful today. You address several key community issues, as you just talked about, uh, struggles around housing, education, health care, police misconduct. I mean, it's a mirror of today. Yes. I mean, several third rail hot topics mm -hmm. we talk about, we just talked about in the yeah. previous 10 minutes of this newscast. Um, has anything changed? Well, I think the real question is what do we need to do to make sure that we get the change that we need? Uh, it's, I think, pretty common that what happens is that there's efforts to make change, they're, they're challenged. We make two steps forward, one step backward consistently, sometimes even more steps backward. And I think that we really need to really look to solve a problem of, uh, let me just give you an example. We've been spending up to, uh, when I left city council, we were spending $50 million a year on, on, on police misconduct cases. We are now, I think, up to as much as $100 million any given year. Uh, the amount of money that we've spent since the time I left city council, if it had been applied to the police pensions and not to misconduct cases, we would be in a situation where we wouldn't have had to raise the property tax in order to address those issues. Uh, but if we, and so we attempt to, so let's attempt to really seriously get at it, but there's so much resistance to it. We have a consent decree that's barely being um, realized, and it's almost 10 years old now, eight, nine, 10 years old. Uh, we have issues, we have numerous circumstances where there are settlements and even judgments against police officers that the city either settles or has to pay up because the courts ordered it, and yet we have very little action that's taken within the city, within the police department, to address those specific individuals. And the consequence, I think, is, um, besides many, many other factors externally, uh, is that you have a huge morale problem within the police department and a huge disconnect connect between the police and the community, and it goes to the policies that are there. So why aren't we changing the policies that change the culture that allow us to really do the things that almost everybody wants, which is lowering crime and creating a better relationship between the police and the community, and bringing in the partners that can really be engaged in addressing many of the things that we throw out the police to do, they are not trained to do, and we end up in conflict unnecessarily. Helen Schiller, you were described as a radical in this book. Uh, certainly some thought-provoking 
conversation, and that's just the beginning of the questions we yeah. have. We don't have enough yeah. time for it now, but the book is just out today. Uh, Helen Schiller, Daring to Struggle, Daring to Win, out today. Thank you for joining us. You're going to have a book launch, too, uh, and that will take place at 6.30 at Haymarket Books in Uptown. Helen Schiller, our thanks this morning. Rob